It's a, this is a very interesting news story that I want to share with you. This is about a, an organization, a terrorist organization that the United States government said does not exist. And yet somehow Newsweek did a, a whole interview with this non-existent terrorist organization. And I'm talking about the East Turkestan Islamic Movement. And here's the Newsweek article exclusive. Despite China's pressure on Taliban, Uyghur separatists see opportunity in Afghanistan. And so let's read through this a little bit. Despite Chinese pressure on the Taliban to crack down on militant groups, the Uyghur separatist organization at the heart of Beijing's own war on terror sees a new opportunity in the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan to undermine the People's Republic. So this almost sounds like the, the U.S. media. This is not Chinese state media. This is U.S. media. It almost sounds like they're admitting that China actually faced a real terrorist threat in its western Xinjiang region, which is what China said, which is what a lot of independent analysts uh, and, and journalists all around the world have said. Uh, yet this is something the U.S. and other western countries have denied, and they claim that China is simply and arbitrarily carrying out a campaign of genocide against the Uyghurs in Xinjiang. But wait, it gets worse. Let's continue reading this Newsweek article. The United States, this is all in quotation, so we'll, we'll find out in a minute who's saying this. The United States is a strong country. It has its own strategy. And we see the withdrawal of the American government today from this war in Afghanistan, which is incurring huge economic losses as a means of confronting China, who are the enemy of all humanity and religions on the face of the earth. Who said this? Is this, is this Mike Pompeo? Is, is this Anthony Blinken? No. It's the spokesperson for the political office of the Turkestan Islamic Party, commonly known as the East Turkestan Islamic Movement. And this is what they said to Newsweek in an interview. And, and, and it gets worse still. In what appears to be the first remarks by the secretive group to an international media outlet since being removed from a U.S. list of terrorist organizations last year, the Turkestan Islamic Party spokesperson expressed hope the U.S. military exit last month would be followed by greater pressure against China. We believe that the opposition of the United States to China will not only benefit the Turkestan Islamic Party and the people of Turkestan, the spokesperson said, but also all mankind. So a lot of people suspected that the U.S. removed the East Turkestan Islamic Movement from their list of terrorist organizations because the U.S. wanted to just openly back them in their campaign of terrorism and murder. Uh, not just in China, but all around the region, anywhere uh, anywhere it would benefit and help advance U.S. foreign policy. And the U.S. has done this with numerous terrorist organizations for decades and decades. Uh, the, the militants in Afghanistan, the U.S. was backing uh, against the Soviet Union, for example. How the U.S. is using al-Qaeda and the Islamic State in places like Syria, for example, or the Li Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, uh, Libyan franchise of Al-Qaeda, the U.S. was arming, backing, and giving air support for in 2011 to overthrow the Libyan government. And so this is nothing new, and this should surprise nobody, but, but let's, let's go and jump down further in this article real quick, because they don't, they don't tell you why the U.S. government delisted the ETIM, East Turkestan Islamic Movement. So right here they say, for many years, the U.S. included ETIM on its terrorist exclusion list, part of Patriot Act measures established after the 9-11 attacks. The Pentagon even targeted the group with airstrikes in Afghanistan up until at least 2018. So that's three years ago. Remember that number, three years ago, three years ago. But as relations between Washington and Beijing deteriorated in recent years, especially amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the Trump administration delisted ETIM, citing a lack of activity and a move that eased travel and other restrictions for members of the group. This, al this, along with the campaign to brand Chinese policy in Xinjiang as genocide, has infuriated Chinese officials. And of course it should. You're delisting a terrorist organization with the obvious intention of sp sponsoring it in, in further terrorism. And then as the Chinese government is reacting to this campaign of deliberate state-sponsored terrorism, you're calling it genocide. 
So what, what country would be okay with that? No country, including China. Now, where does this three years ago come into play? Let's jump over to this Guardian article. Uh, this is from November 2020. U.S. removes shadowy group from terror list blamed by China for attacks. Well, now Newsweek is admitting that they've, they've carried out all kinds of attacks, and I'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but here it says, State Department says no credible evidence the East Turkestan Islamic movement exists. Well, they should talk to Newsweek, who just interviewed their spokesperson. It obviously exists. It's doing interviews with U.S. media. And down here, ETIM was removed from the list because for more than a decade, there has been no credible evidence that ETM, ETIM continues to exist. And of course, this isn't true because the U.S. was carrying out airstrikes on ETIM targets in Afghanistan as recently as three years ago. So this is just the U.S. doing what it always does. It's lying. It's lying about this. Uh, they, were, they attack the organization when it benefits them, and then they take them off the terrorist list and sponsor them when, when it benefits them. This is what we're watching unfold right here. So back to the Newsweek article, they're going to explain about this campaign of terrorism that the ETIM had, had carried out. So here it says, the insurgency began with a series of deadly attacks in the 1990s and violent incidents tied to the separatist cause continued up until 2017 in a bloody bid to weaken China's resolve in Xinjiang. Claimed alongside parts of western Gansu and Qinghai provinces by the group to form East Turkestan. East Turkestan is the land of the Uyghurs, the Turkestan Islamic Party spokesperson said. After the Chinese government occupied our homeland by force, they forced us to leave our homeland because of their oppression against us. The whole world knows that East Turkestan has always been the land of the Uyghurs. And, and if you're in doubt that the U.S. supports the notion of East Turkestan, what these terrorists are killing people to try to carve off of China and establish, look no further than the U.S. government's own National Endowment for Democracy website. This is their, their list for programs that they are funding in a region that they call Xinjiang, which is what China and the rest of the world calls that region, Xinjiang. But they also have a slash East Turkestan here. And East Turkestan is a term that no one in the world recognizes except for these violent separatists and the people sponsoring them. And if we look at these organizations on this list and we go to their website, we're going to see a very common theme. So let's look at the first one on the list, Uyghur Human Rights Project. Uh, besides, you know, counterfeiting the look of the UN to make it look extra official when it is just a Washington based fake front funded by the US government to antagonize China. Besides that, this is what they say when they say, what is the Uyghur Human Rights Project? The Uyghur Human Rights Project promotes the rights of the Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslim peoples in East Turkestan, referred to by the Chinese government as the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. If we come down here, there's another organization called World Uyghur Congress. And on their website, they say, uh, you know, who we are and their mission statement. And they're talking about it being an opposition movement against Chinese occupation of East Turkestan. So this is verbatim the language that the East Turkestan Islamic Movement or ETIM or TIP, depending on uh, how they're referring to this terrorist organization. This is verbatim the language used by the armed militants and these fake fronts based in Washington, D.C. and funded by the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy. So what we're watching unfold right, right before our eyes and what Newsweek is all but just uh, directly admitting to is that the U.S. is sponsoring terrorism against China. They're going to use ETIM or TIP uh, as an armed proxy against China, and they're maybe based in Afghanistan. And we can just imagine that the U.S. is going to do everything in their power to keep this, this game piece on the board. And uh, one last thing that I want to show you here is uh, the United Nations Security Council itself, uh, East Turkestan Islamic Movement. And this is the U.N. saying this. And I just want to read this part for you. 
The East Turkestan Islamic Movement is an organization which has used violence to further its aim of setting up an independent, so-called East Turkestan within China. So they're putting East Turkestan in quotation marks because it does not really exist. And they are telling you that Xinjiang is actually part of China. It's within Chinese territory. It is not an independent territory. It does not belong to these violent separatists. Newsweek even says right here, beyond China and the UN, an array of nations and international organizations, including the European Union, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Pakistan, Russia, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom consider ETIM to be a terrorist organization. And, and so really, uh, we see wh who's missing from this list. The US is missing from this list. And the US uh, is doing this very deliberately as part of its, its increasingly dangerous co conflict that it is engineering with China. So we have to be very careful. We have to keep a very close eye on this. It's, it's very obvious that the, the terrorism in Xinjiang was being sponsored by the US, backed by the US. And then when China responded to this terrorism, the US used that response as an opportunity to accuse Beijing of genocide when it was no such thing. No evidence of actual genocide has ever been produced. Even the people accusing Beijing of genocide have to put in fine print, oh, it's a, it's a cultural genocide. And it's not even that. And so this is the game Washington is playing. Please be aware of it. Uh, people promoting this narrative that China is carrying out genocide, that these are somehow freedom fighters and not terrorists, just be on notice that these people are lying. This is to China what WMDs was to Iraq. It is a huge lie and it's being used to steer the United States into war with China. The US and the Western world into war with China and anyone else the US can coerce to join them. Be very careful about this. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It helps the channel grow and it's free to do. I have a website, newatlas.report. All of my articles and videos are there. Uh, if YouTube ever takes down my channel, I will just host videos on another video sharing platform and embed them on the website. So it's a one stop where you can follow all of my work. I'm not really on any social media either. So if you want to follow my work, please bookmark and uh, check the website regularly. There is no paywall and there never will be. Check the video description for all of the links that I referenced in this video, as well as for ways you can help support my work. To people who have been supporting my work, whether it's through Patreon, supporting my work month to month or one-time donations, or even if you're just liking and sharing my work, thank you so much. This would not be possible without that support. And as always, thank you for watching.